Okay. All right, so um, I'm Steve, and I'm going to talk a little bit about vectors, OpenStreetMap vectors, and mobile devices. So let's dive in. So uh, in this talk, I'll cover um, what I do, which is this uh, geospatial display toolkit, uh, why you might want to do vectors at all, um, vectors that we can get out of the OpenStreetMap data, and uh, the goals of this experiment results and, and areas I saw for improvement. Let me just adjust this. Hold on. Okay, that's better. All right, so I make a high-performance geospatial data display toolkit for iOS that's iPad and iPhone. It's basically for displaying, um, you know, essentially map data on top of an interactive spinny globe or a 2D flat map or like a 3D map. So it's open source. You can get it for free. It's distributed under the Apache 2.0 license, so it's fairly free for commercial use. It uses OpenGLES, so it's very fast. Uh, and you can often get like 60 frames a second, like... Um, the Mapbox Earth uh, application, the app that came out recently on, for the iPhone and iPad, that's based on this toolkit. Um, you can do a lot of different features with it, vectors, tiled base maps, shapes, things like that. And it's currently for the iPad and iPhone, and uh, I'm planning on porting it to Android just as soon as somebody costs up the cash for it. So again, everything I'm talking about here in the rest of this talk is open source. Uh, the data that we're getting from the, uh, the US OpenStreetMap server, obviously that's open. The whole OpenStreetMap server stack is open. The uh, mobile toolkit that I'm using to display it on this iPad, that's also open. So everything here is open. And you can actually go and download it, compile it, and build it into your own apps or just play with it. All right, so why would you even bother with vector data? Uh, image tiles in, have, have served OpenStreetMap and other uh, map providers very well over the years. They're really easy to understand. You render into a, a set of image tiles and uh, off you go. They're simple to display. You can put them back together on a globe, which is something that I do a lot, or you can put them in a flat map or just do all sorts of great stuff with them. They're pretty easy to serve and there's all sorts of strategies for making that faster. And they scale really nicely. You start with uh, level zero and work your way all the, all the way up to, to whatever you might want. They're very predictable. There's a lot of good things about them. So why why do vectors at all? Well, there are a couple of reasons I think we're talking about. One is that they can be smaller. Um, if you have just a few roads in a tile, for example, rendering that into an image and then handing over the image will probably be bigger than representing the vectors. But on the other hand, if you have a lot of roads, then it can go the other way. So it's, you know, it's an interesting argument whether or not uh, vectors are always smaller in all cases. But I think more interesting is that they're much more flexible. So you can decide what you want to draw on the, the device that you're, you're getting the vectors, and you can change your style. So you could change the width of roads based on, on input, or you can change the coloring or what have you to based, based on the, the screen size or you know, uh, whatever you want. And labels are great too. You can do label, some simple label layout on the device, and you don't have to have them rendered into the tile. So you can change languages or whatever you want. It's very flexible. So here's what we can get from the US OpenStreetMap server. So this was a, an experiment that um, uh, a couple of people set up. Mike Magursky uh, was the guy who got the, the tiles served in vector format. And we can get these different, uh, different pieces of data out for several different levels. So we can get buildings, roads, of course, OpenStreetMap, obviously roads, road labels, which are a separate layer, which is kind of interesting, uh, water features, of course, and uh, land use data as well. So those are the different layers that we can play with. And these are coming to us as GeoJSON, or there are other formats as available, but in this talk I'm just using GeoJSON. So you can just go to that URL, take a look at what's available, and start playing with it. And other people have been doing this with, um, for example, uh, leaflet-based renderers or, or what have you. I, I, I'm doing it on mobile, but it's really open for other people to use too. So here's the goals of the experiment I'm talking about today. Um, obviously on the easy end, display a single vector layer of roads, for example, at a single resolution, and then all the way up to a full vector map kind of at the high end. So we'll just go through these one by one. All right, so if you want to do a single vector layer, just roads, for example, at say level 14, uh, here's how it works. You identify the tiles that you want to draw, you fetch the tiles, that comes back as GeoJSON, you parse that and so on, and then you style the tiles. So you look at, uh, this is something we were talking about earlier today, you, you look at the attributes on the data and you decide how you're going to render highways versus major roads versus minor roads and so on. And then you hand it over to the render, in this case Maply, um, 
and that's doing kind of the crazy rendering stuff. So it, you know, if, if you want to make an analogy between Mapnik and an interactive renderer, this is the part where you just sort of hand, hand it over the wall and it does the rendering. You don't really have to worry about how. All right, well, let's, let's go to the demo here because that's really the interesting part. Okay, here's roads at a single resolution. So I've got to zoom in to get to that resolution. So these are GeoJSON tiles, and of course they're cached because I'm not going to depend on Wi-Fi at a conference. That's just crazy. So it's, uh, it's caching most of these. And you can see we've got differentiation between major roads and minor roads, and I think probably got some highways in here as well somewhere. There we go. And it's basically doing what I described. It loads in the data, it parses it uh, based on what tiles we need to see, and uh, yeah, that works. So single resolution works pretty well. You can see it's fairly interactive. Uh, I, I can see on this thing I'm getting about 60 frames a second. So that's about where I want to be. So first part, successful. OK, so here's what was happening under the hood. Every time we need to display a tile, we look in our cache, see if we've already got it. If we don't, we hit the OpenStreetMap US server. If we do, we just pull it from the cache, and then we parse the GeoJSON. Now, I'm using GeoJSON here just because it's simple. Everybody understands it. Uh, it's really basic. Uh, for a production environment, I'm not sure you'd necessarily want to, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Then you have to style the vectors, and this is something uh, that's important for display. You have to figure out how you want to display the highways versus the roads and so on. And then, uh, again, that's kind of all at the, the application level. And then you hand it over to the rendering library, and it takes care of figuring out how to draw it really fast. So uh, this is, again, the experiment goals. Uh, the single vector layer, single res, that works pretty well. So we can move on to a single vector layer at multiple resolutions. And this is a little bit different. Um, it's very similar to the way you page a quad tree of image tiles, which people do all the time in, uh, in uh, you know, for map display. So you start at the, stop at the top of the quad tree, you look at how much screen space that, that chunk is taking up, and then you load that one, and then you look at the children, and you keep loading essentially until you run out of tiles or you've loaded everything that you cared about. So the more interesting one is the demo. So this is roads at multiple resolutions. So we're starting at, um, I forget what levels it is. It must be around 10 or 11. And then as we zoom in, will load in higher resolutions as needed. And a lot of the roads are duplicated between tiles, of course. Uh, in one tile, they might be uh, less accurate. And in another tile, we've added more points, and, and so on and so forth. So if you're being really clever, you might try to interpolate between those. I'm not being really clever here. So here, for example, Golden Gate Park. As we zoom in, we get the trails at fairly high resolution. So that's getting closer to a real map. We've got a single, we've got roads, essentially a single layer that we're uh, paging in at multiple levels, and that works pretty well. And in terms of performance, which is what I tend to obsess about, we're getting about 60 frames a second here. Um, so that's pretty good. You could actually, you're starting to get to some, to the level where you could actually use this for something. So onward. OK, so basically, I'm just going over that again. Uh, so I'd say sing a single vector layer at multiple resolutions works pretty well. You could actually you could use that for something. So on to multiple vector layers plus a base map. And this is kind of the sweet spot. What that is is uh, instead of taking just a pure base map, we kind of render a simple base map. Uh, and in the, the case I'm going to show you here, I've just got uh, water and land use data and uh, elevation, and that's about it. And then we layer vector data on top of that. So roads, the road labels, the buildings, and you know, just see what it looks like. So again, the demo is more interesting, so let's just dive in. OK, I'm going to try the, the version without labels first. So it might look a little better on that screen. So here we've got simple base map that I'm just tiling from Mapbox based on you know, OpenStreetMap plus probably natural earth data. Uh, and it's it's fairly fairly bland. It's got nice water, you know, some land use data and uh, elevation, but it doesn't have the roads in it. So the roads are vectors, and those are paging in as needed. And then if we get down close enough, we get buildings. And this is where things start to get interesting, because you can imagine actually using this for something. 
and the performance isn't too bad. Um, slinging GeoJSON around is, is not the best idea, but you know, if, if you're not doing too much of it, it, it works pretty well. And again, let's look at that, that example in, in the park here, and we've got those roads matching up pretty well. With, you know, there's a bit of an offset there, but it's for another day. Okay, so let's take a look at the labels. So we do the same thing with labels. And uh, labels get interesting because they're, uh, they can clutter up the display fairly easily. So what you have to do is, is actually decide how to place them in real time. And my label layout engine, the one for Whirly Globe Maply, is, is a little deficient in this area for these sorts of labels. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's doing the basic thing here. We're getting labels on the streets. You know, you can see the buildings and the different types of, uh, of streets as well. And it's a basic idea there. Now in terms of performance, it's dropping down to about 30 frames a second, uh, which you know, is something I tend to obsess over that maybe nobody else cares about. But what, what that means essentially is we're drawing more information than we probably should, and there's a lot of latency in the loading. So if I like move out here, and then I move to an area that we haven't loaded before, it takes a while to catch up. And I'll explain why. Ideally, this should be instantaneous here, but you know, it's got a ways to go yet. But the basic idea works. All right, so back to the slides. Okay, so here's the data we were looking at, uh, starting at level zero all the way to level up, up to level 18, and those, that's just levels in the quad tree. Like most of you are probably familiar with that stuff. Um, the base map goes all the way, and then we were just pulling in the roads around level 11, uh, road labels a little bit later, and uh, stopping them before they got to level 18, just sort of as a tuning measure. And then the buildings just kind of at the last three levels. So different versions of the buildings and different buildings based on size, depending on what the server has decided to select. So that's what we're looking at. So in terms of multi, uh, the goals for the overall experiment, multiple vector layers plus a base, base map works pretty well, actually. I think that's kind of the sweet spot. Labels could use a little work. There's all sorts of rendering performance things to look at, but there always are. You could actually, I think, use this. And again, it's all open source, so if you can provide yourself with a vector source, then you can just go use it in your own app. But the really interesting question is, what about doing all vectors? Because an all vector map is kind of a, an interesting goal. And I, I think if you look at some of the commercial uh, providers these days, they're doing that at times. So what about a pure vector map? And it, this is really a stretch goal here. So let's give that a minute. And so again, we've got the roads, we've got road labels, uh, and there you see some land use features, faintly. And at some point, we should see water. Now this is where things get interesting kind of from a performance perspective. I'll, I'll explain why in a couple of slides here. But the basic idea is sound. We've got the same features we were looking at before. It's a little slower to load them, so let's, let's bear with it. Buildings, land use, and water. And notice I'm carefully not zooming out because stuff starts to disappear then. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it works okay. It's starting to slow down a bit. You can see it's maybe getting 15, 30 frames a second. Um, and the, uh, the latency for loading is way up. So particularly when I get near the water, it takes it a while to load those features. There we go. And some of this is just because the data is not as well suited to display on this sort of device. And some of it's just my toolkit. All right, so where does that put us? Okay, here's what we were looking at. Uh, no base map this time. And we were looking at the roads and road labels and buildings. Those were similar to the last experiment. Uh, but the land use data and the water data was only for a single uh, level. And that's just kind of to cut down on the latency. Um, and there's a lot we can do to improve that. OK, so what, what sort of problems did we see with that? It was a little slower than I'd like. Uh, there's no particular reason that something like that can't draw at 60 frames a second on a device like this, an iPad, or even an iPhone. Um, so it's really just a matter of organizing things better. The styling is an interesting issue in, of, in and of itself. And there's been at least a, a one or two talks that kind of reference styling today. 
Uh, and that's, that's something that's even more complicated on the device because you just don't want to spend a lot of time figuring out that a road should be five pixels wide with edges and this texture. It's something you want to be simple when you're trying to render. And, and there's missing data here. Obviously, we're not doing labels for non-road features. There's other stuff missing as well. So in terms of how we did for that experiment, I'd say kind of halfway. Uh, multiple vector layers with a base map, that's kind of the sweet spot, worked pretty well. The full vector map, there's some room for improvement there. So what sort of room for improvement? Uh, on the client side, that is on the, the rendering side, the, you know, what's actually running on the device, uh, binary data would be nice. Um, I'm parsing GeoJSON again and again because I'm pulling it out of the cache. Really, you kind of want to do something a little more efficient. Uh, it's slow to parse. It's just not a great format for this. Faster vector drawing, those are kind of internal issues. Right now, the vectors aren't being drawn as efficiently as um, image base maps, just because I tend to have more users who do image base maps than I do users doing vector tiles. And a simplified approach to styling would be nice. I, I didn't really do, tend to do too much of the styling here. Like you might notice the land use areas were all green, and I guarantee they weren't all parks. Um, that tends to get a little complex. So talking about that issue, the simplified styling, there's a, an excerpt over here from the uh, OX, OSM XML style sheet, and it's just a chunk. It, it's gigantic. Even the Cardo CSS equivalent is still pretty big. It may not really be something you want to you want to parse on a mobile device to figure out what you're supposed to draw. Um, I mean, I know people are doing that. They're certainly playing around with that. I think it's quite likely that I'll end up doing that at one point or another, but it doesn't really appeal. Uh, it would be nice to have something relatively simple. So if I get a tile of data from a remote server, a tile of vector data, I'd like to be able to have a simple lookup that says this road is this color represented this way, this water feature is this color represented this way. That would be nice. Perhaps unrealistic, but nice. On the server side, uh, binary data would obviously be nice. Now, it already has... It can already ship out, I think, well-known text or well-known binary. So to some extent, that's kind of on my side. Um, and it can already send GeoJSON compressed. So that, that would be helpful. But it would be nice to have something that's a little simpler for a client to parse, and yet still isn't uh, too specific to what one app might want to do. Um, consolidating data delivery would be great, and I've got a slide about that. More attribution kind of going the other way to make it bigger. I'd love to have building heights because uh, Maple is a 3D toolkit, so it could actually draw them. Um, and right now, we're not getting those. It would also be great to have those in the database everywhere. Uh, feature sorting by size, just kind of break things out by their area. And some things that would be convenient for uh, clients like this, uh, turning everything to convex polygons would be nice. It actually takes a while to triangulate a giant aerial feature with holes. It's kind of annoying. It would be great to just say, hey, could you give me the convex polys? I can take care of the rest. So for consolidating data delivery, for each tile, I'm requesting all these different layers. And right now, I'm doing it in separate. I'm doing it separately just to make it efficient, uh, you know, efficient to display, not to transfer. So each of these layers is, is like a, a layer is requesting the roads, and then the road labels, and the water, and the land use all at once. And some of it arrives and some of it doesn't, but it still mostly displays. It would be nice to just group those all together as one request and then get those back all at once, but still do it in a way that, that's easy enough for uh, people playing around with this stuff to understand. And stripping unused att attribution would be nice. And there are ways to do this. Um, it's just a matter of really picking one. Grouping features by size would be nice. It would be great to break the water out into really large, gnarly features and really small, simple features and kind of put those in separate layers. Um, you know, you might only page the really big water between certain levels and then bring in the really small water at, at different levels. All right, so conclusions here. So I'd say the OSM vector tiles from the US OpenStreetMap server are very useful. Um, this is just one project that's using them, and uh, they were really easy to use, great fun to play with, and I think there's all sorts of things you can do with them. You, and you can actually display them on mobile devices. I mean, we kind of knew that. We see commercial toolkits and big providers doing similar things, so it, it's no big, big surprise. And most importantly, you can do it with open source tools. So all the way through this, this was all open source stuff. Uh, so here's the, uh, the URL for, for the base toolkit. Um, the slides are at that bit.ly URL. And uh, that also has a link to the app itself. So if you want to go on GitHub and clone that app it, and then do a couple of sub-module updates because it's got to pull in other stuff and then build it, you can. 
So the, the app that I'm using here, you can just build it and go. My contact information, and I wanted to thank Ian Dees and, and Mike Magursky for um, maintaining the US OpenStreetMap server and getting the vector tiles going, and of course the, the OpenStreetMap Foundation for, for the server in the first place. It's been a great place to just uh, do experiments, and I know I've been hitting it pretty heavily in the last couple of weeks, and it's done pretty well. So questions? Um, well, so when I do these sorts of things, and this was just on my time, nobody's really paying for it, uh, I'm trying to push the technology, my technology, in an interesting way. So I did that, so now I'm going to reabsorb those changes, particularly for paging these vector tiles, and then sort of see what people are interested in. So if anybody wants to do this a little more seriously, um, then yeah, I guess just talk to me. Like, it would be nice to see it incorporated as like a real uh, map display app, but the app part of that isn't the hard part. The hard part is standing up the servers to serve the tiles. Like, who, who would want to do that? Who would want to pay for that? So I, I think most likely this stuff will find its way into client projects, because that's what I do for a living. And then hopefully, you know, if we can think about the vector tile version of things, then maybe, maybe an app. But certainly more technology based on it. Anybody else? OK. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, that's the, let me see if I've got it here. Hold on. Um, it's just the US OpenStreetMap server. And actually, if somebody knows it better than me, they can explain it. But basically, I think it's up at the University of Oregon. And it's, it's meant for experiments. Where'd it go? Here we go. Yeah, so if you just go to that URL, it, it kind of explains what vector data you can get from there. So, oh, uh, did I? Sorry, what was that? Right. Yeah, have I thought of doing a non GL version? It would be huge. The performance difference would be huge. It's kind of what I do, so it's. It's hard for me to answer that. I'd be like, well, why would I want to do that? I couldn't get 60 frames a second. So um, it's probably, I would have to talk to somebody who'd done something like that and then compare notes. But it's not something I would really think about because I'm after like the maximum performance on the device. It's kind of my, my thing. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think WebGL, oh, so the question is, have I tried anything with WebGL? Um, I, I really like WebGL. I think that's a great idea because it's essentially OpenGL ES. It's the same, more or less the same toolkit in the browsers that you have for these devices. Um, I'm kind of deeply tied into this technology, particularly with the threading and the interface, yeah, essentially native technology. So I'm curious to see what they're doing with open layers, for example. Uh, and that would be great. And if they want to look at some of the algorithms that I use and, and borrow them, it's all open source. That would be awesome. Personally, I think I'll probably stick with native just uh, because that's kind of the, I'm really after that highest level of performance possible. Um, but yeah, it's a great question. And I'm really excited to see what people do with WebGL um, on mobile devices, certainly, but also just generally on the web. Okay. Is that it? Oh, OK. Yeah, so the question was, can you run Mapnik on a device and render the vectors to uh, image tiles? You know, I, I think there's probably people who understand that better than I. And I think they're experimenting with that. Um, from my perspective, it's just another tile source. Like, uh, uh, so it wouldn't really, it would be more latency, certainly. Uh, but I don't see why you couldn't if you're able to do it. You know, I, well, we saw Mapnik running on something really low end this morning. So, yeah, you, I, I think you could do that. Uh, the question is just how complex does the, do the descriptions get? How long would it take to render? Uh, it's going to increase the latency, but it shouldn't slow down the rendering speed. So yeah, I, I imagine you could. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to violate my own rule and go over to an area I haven't already paged in. So yeah, I was playing with this last night. Uh, and let's see, base map I think is good. 
And sure enough, um, yeah, anywhere, I think. If you haven't been to that area before, it tends to be a little cranky. But, uh, you know, it, it seems to work pretty well. So I don't think I've been over here yet. North 49. Where? North 49. Uh, you mean Canada? Yeah. Canada. 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 <laughs> I'd love to live down there. I'd love to live down there. But, uh, okay, where's a good... Well, I know Van where Vancouver is, like all Americans, but... Uh, you know, without all the, without any of the markings, it's really hard to find oh, stuff. North, 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 okay. Somewhere around here. All right. Well, let's let's see it. It goes. So what'll happen is it's hitting like a PostGIS server. So it's got to do these tiles. No. Okay. This way. I can't navigate without the the, the labels. I'm sorry. Southern end of the Big Island. Okay, right over here. Ah, uh, okay. All right, thank you. See, if it had been America, it would have been fine. But you know. I okay, so what what will happen is it's fetching the tiles remotely from the server. I was working out of the cache for the demo because I don't know what the Wi-Fi is like, and I've noticed sometimes like I'll hit it once. It's doing all that processing. Sometimes it gets cranky and drops the connection. If I come back, you know, it may eventually pull it in. So it looks like we're not getting any tiles here. So you know, that's generally a question about scaling. It's like, what does it make any sense? Do you want to pre-chop all these or what? Oh. OK, let's let it page. So, and I'm also fetching these in parallel. So the buildings came through, yay. But it may be that the roads are, oh, there we go. OK, that's better. So yeah, like uh, in terms of performance, do you want to pre-chop all this or what? It, it's, a, it's a similar tile to problem to base map tiles, but in some ways much worse. So I think that you need to get that sorted out before you could have anything real based on this. Um, so I think my time's probably getting close. Is anybody? Oh, one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, mostly. I, I was sort of joking about that, because you can compress images really, really well. Um, and the internet just loves images. Everything's just greased for images to go through. So in a sense, it's not just size. But yeah, for sure, you could get the vector tiles down. And particularly if you're careful about selecting what goes in each tile, which, you know, for the most part, this actually is doing a reasonable job, then yeah, it should be smaller most of the time. But there's a lot of caveats there. Yeah. And images just kind of are very simple. I think that's it for me, um, so thank you very much.